How's it going guys? We have a super annoying dead space versus shunt question. I will keep this clip real clean and concise. Tell you exactly what you need to know and not waste our time, okay? These terms can be very annoying and I'll make this real consolidated for you. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. Really appreciate it. Give it a like, really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, Melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L, man underscore medical links down below. Find me on Telegram, links to Telegram group and channel down below. And I'll start the clip. 42 year old woman, she has a 48 pack year history of smoking with COPD and question just wants to know what's most likely to be seen. So as I prefaced with, I'm gonna keep this real simple. Dead space versus shunt. So we have V on Q ratio, ventilation in comparison to perfusion, all right? If the ratio is low, ventilation is low compared to perfusion, it's going to be shunt. If the ratio is high, high V on Q, okay? Meaning that perfusion Q is low. That's going to be pulmonary embolism. So this is what you need to know. Pulmonary embolism is the only thing on USMLE that's going to be dead space, okay? Everything else is shunt. So you look at this question here, is this a pulmonary embolism? No. So dead space, wrong fucking answer. A, B, C, we eliminate all of them. Now, I'll quickly jump through what they are, A, B, C, but they're all fucking wrong. This is shunt. So we have low ventilation in comparison to perfusion. Now there's lots of details we could talk about as far as how if you give oxygen in the setting of a shunt, how it doesn't improve things. USMLE really doesn't care, okay? It's all fancy details, all the garbage, nonsense. Real quick, alveolar dead space. This refers to natural variation of high V on Q in the lungs where at the apices, we have natural dead space. We call that alveolar dead space. So ventilation and perfusion both increase from apex to base, but because gravity is gonna pull fluid, pull blood down more than air, we have higher Q at the bases. So we have a natural shunt at the bases, we have a natural dead space at the apices. Some of you listening to this are already confused. That's my fucking point, it's a waste of time. But that's what alveolar dead space refers to. Natural variation in the lungs where you have natural dead space at the top, natural shunt at the bottom. US simply doesn't give a fuck. Choice B, anatomic dead space, wrong fucking answer. This refers to natural parts of the respiratory tree, such as the trachea, bronchi, the terminal bronchioles that are exposed to ventilation, air's moving in and out, but they don't partake in gas exchange. So you have high ventilation, but they're not perfused for gas exchange. That's a high V on Q. That's anatomic dead space. And then physiologic dead space is just the sum of alveolar and anatomic dead space, okay? Students see this question, it's nearly identical, one on one of the offline NBMEs, and they think because, they psychoanalyze, they think because there's three dead space answers, OMG, that the question is trying to play a trick and that it's one of them, it's wrong. This is shunt, okay? This is low ventilation compared to perfusion. This isn't pulmonary embolism. COPD, emphysema, bronchitis, fibrosis, asthma, they're all shunt for USMLE. Okay, students will get pedantic, give other examples where apart from pulmonary embolism, we can see dead space. It's fucking wrong. Okay, radial traction real quick. You'll see this buzzy. This is acid and VME. This refers to stickiness, quote unquote, on the outside of the airways that can be seen in pulmonary fibrosis, where this is the reason why we have a normal or increased FV1 over FVC in restrictive, whereas in obstructive, it's lower. So if you ask students, why do we have a higher FV1 over FVC in restrictive in comparison to obstructive, the answer you'll get 19 out of 20 times is, well, the numerator doesn't decrease as much as wrong fucking answer, okay? It's going to be radial traction. So you've got stickiness in the outside of the airways, kind of holds the airways open in fibrosis, and that's why your FV1 over FVC is normal or increased in comparison to obstructive where we don't have radial traction. You know the deal to make more content. I feel like my stuff, subscribe my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.